Northern Ireland is being inundated with planning applications for factory pig farms. Local people are protesting because existing animal factories are sickening local residents, polluting natural habitats, and are destroying local economies. The people that are behind this and, and other pig factories are not farmers. They're not farmers, they're going on to farmers' lands, yes, and paying off farmers, but they're not farmers themselves, like, they're, they're businessmen. Heaven help us, what have they done? At the JMW Limited factory farm at Ballyclare, a neighbour had tried to complain to the management. It's not a farm as such, it's, it's, a, it's a factory or pig concentration camp if you like. They wouldn't talk to us. I, mean, I have had the, the door slammed in my face when I went to talk to them about, about issues. The owners of the JMW farm, Jim and Mark White, refused our request for an interview. They're also directors of Crockway Farms Limited in Somerset, where animal welfare campaigners Viva exposed the squalid conditions in which the pigs were kept. But so I think that while the general public's objection is primarily about smell, they really do need to understand the potential toxic effect. There are going to be a number of ways it's going to impact on the local population, which is appreciable. There are going to be irritants and allergens, gases like ammonia and hydrogen sulphide. Any child roaming around in this sort of area is potentially going to ingest antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Modern medicine relies on the use of antibiotics. If they don't work, then it can lead to prolonged illness or even to death. And we're beginning to see that with bacterial resistance. Another health issue is with, with the flies, and the, the amount of flies, which are, are landing on, on the pig slurry, uh, and then they're coming across to our house and, uh, and landing on items of food. A US report showed that flies can spread bacteria several miles from pig farms to neighboring people. I was embarrassed by the smell, you know, if people would, would come to call, if you left your windows open at all, your house was full of flies. And my daughter was terrified of, of flies. And there were times at night when a fly would have gotten into her room and she'd wake up screaming because a fly was, um, one of these big massive flies was buzzing around her bed. People are concerned about the value of their properties and, and close proximity to these plants, that the, the value will, will drop because of uh, smell and uh, pollution and noise. We get lots of visitors to Northern Ireland who are interested in uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, and the filming locations are uh, around the, the Lamavadi area. We want them to enjoy that, of course. We don't want them to experience in Northern Ireland, which is sort of dotted with huge industrial plants. Though the recommended distance between an animal factory and a private residence is 250 metres, Dr. Debbie Turner, an occupational health specialist, lives only 150 metres from the site. Many objectors don't believe that health issues will be taken into account, and her objection was ignored. I quote part of her objection. Of huge concern to me is the spread of disease from pigs to humans because of their close genetic links to human DNA. High-risk populations like the very young, the elderly, pregnant women, and the immunocompromised are all at very real risk of long-term health problems. She goes on, the assertion in the applicant's report that the proposal will not cause demonstrable harm to human health is in no way substantiated or supported by any proper research. It's going to have an impact for me personally with uh, my son Logan, who's the youngest of my children. He has a um, chronic lung condition and he also is on the autistic spectrum and has sensory processing disorder. On um, walking Logan to school, when he used to go to the primary school, he would have vomited on the way to school because the senses were just overloaded with the smell from the smaller pig farm, which is below this one. And considering how much more slurry is going to be needed to be spread out in fields surrounding my home, I would be concerned about that. In Denmark, the overuse of antibiotics in factory pig farms has led to a dangerous rise in human infections caused by the antibiotic-resistant superbug, MRSA. We know that we have to reduce our antibiotic use. We have used too many antibiotics for many years. 
So yes, we should have done, done this uh, sooner and it would have been easier to contain, for instance, the MISA problem if we had done so. So a few years ago we were presented, we weren't asked, we were presented with this strategy that would absolutely and fundamentally reshape the rural environment in Northern Ireland. It was called Going for Growth. From the very beginning they compromised themselves by not complying with domestic and with European laws. And we're seeing the consequences now with a polluted countryside. The basic problem with effluent is either silage effluent or slurry is the most basic thing it does is remove oxygen from the water. Fish can't survive if there's no oxygen. If these factories keep spreading and spreading, my grandchildren will never even know what a, what a salmon looked like. As we walk through this wet field, there should have been snipe, there should be lapwings buzzing, and curlews in the background. They were all here when I moved here 30 years ago. We had over a thousand pairs of curlews in Northern Ireland. Now we have about 40. So we pollute our waters. We let all the effluent from too many cows and too many pigs, as if it doesn't matter about future generations. If we think of the conditions in which these animals are reared, the, the sterile conditions, the concrete slatted floors, the lack of bedding and the stench of the gases that are coming up from the slurry pit underneath, that is what these pigs are condemned to for their short lives. The growth of otherwise unprofitable factory pig farms in Northern Ireland is being encouraged by massive financial incentives for anaerobic digesters, ADs, most of which use livestock slurry to make energy. Though the payment scheme is now closed for new ADs, most existing ADs will continue to use livestock slurry and continue to attract payments at a rate four times higher than anywhere else in the UK for 20 years. The scheme is financed by a levy on UK electricity bills, averaging at £200 per household per year. London city speculators, attracted by the huge subsidies for renewable energy from anaerobic digester plants, persuaded Raymond Pollock to sell his herd of organic dairy cows and join a scheme whereby he would provide his grass silage and run the AD plant. They told us it would take X tonnes of silage to uh, run the plant, turned out it takes twice the amount. This planning clearly states it was for a farm-based agricultural project. This is no longer the case. I haven't been involved in it now since over a year and a half now going, and it's now run from Savile Row in London, but from by Assured Energy Limited, who developed the plant, backed by GCP, who are a finance crowd. They are both running this now on a commercial basis. The developers of it uh, haven't complied with all the planning and the uh, environmental issues, health and safety, and I've been having running battles with them and it's the biggest mistake I ever made was to build this plant. I cannot understand why the authorities do not take more action to impose the rules and regulations. The, the problem is the planning was in my name. The authorities have threatened me with prosecution. We're here today to protest against the largest pig planning application in the UK for a pig factory with 2,700 sows. We don't want 66,000 tonnes of shit every year. And our fields can't take it, our rivers can't take it, and we're not going to take it. So five local people will be employed, which is a joke. None of the money staying in the community. You know, not even the meat is staying in the community. The meat's going somewhere else. Like people sometimes hear there's jobs coming, but they don't ask how many jobs are coming. And when we tell them there are three or four jobs and one, you know, some of those are pumping and full antibiotics and some of them are dragging out dead piglets, then they get it that it's not a, it's not a, you know, good employment. So they're going to be spreading the slurry over 20 square miles and within that 20 square miles there are three rivers, all the tributaries, 17 protected sites and a huge number of people who are living in those areas. As a campaign group, we know there are people up in arms. We would like more people to be up in arms. And that would be, you know, that's part of the work that we're doing, is trying to spread the message. It's a bit like the parallel with the large supermarkets, 
who in England and America have wiped out all commercial activity in small towns, left towns uh, with no post office, no bakery, no nothing. Now you can apply the same parallel to this. If these things are going to be allowed, and then at the end of the day who owns them? Probably investors in China or Hong Kong or New York or wherever it is, doesn't matter. So the people of the land of Ireland end up with not only living in filth and pollution, but also no ownership, no sense of community, no identity, no reason for protecting it anymore. The choice is between a healthy and abundant rural economy based on fishing, based on family farms, based on good food, healthy food, real food, or an alternative, and that alternative is a spectre and it's called going for growth. There's a, there's a rising awareness of animal welfare. There is a, a desire for people to know where their pork and their meat comes from. They want provenance, they want to know how it's made. We try and keep everything as natural and organic here as possible. We've been going for 20 years, the family farm. So we keep Tamworth pigs completely free range. And the commercialisation of farming has created an industry that's meant that people think that chicken and pork and bacon and eggs are cheap. They're not cheap, they shouldn't be cheap. An animal died for that and if, if it died then you should pay a good price. People don't realise how hard it is to keep going in this world of supermarkets which are just pushing down the price of everything. The whole system just doesn't work. We have to get back to this system where everything's a lot smaller and people should eat way less meat and way better meat in my opinion. I'm a greedy little man, here I stand, ten feet taller than the also rats. The law won't catch me because the law don't care, your government's bent. I put them there.